Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Good afternoon. Welcome to one more lecture of uh, analytics course, Applied Analytics, the Practitioner's Approach on Descriptive, Prescriptive and Predictive Analytics. And uh, as you have gone through different basic aspects of it and we are trying to focus more towards the applied side of this course, today we are going to do a quick overview about the probability. So, hence today's presentation is the overview of probability. Now that for practitioners, probability is kind of a tricky concept. and uh, quite a lot of uh, things has talked about this. So, we will try to take it from the practitioner's approach what it is. So, let us start with the definition of random variables, okay? uh, the very basic aspects of uh, the probability. And to do that, the first thing we need to think about is this concept called experiment. Okay? Uh, and the definition that we are going to cover here today is more about the what is an practitioner's an applied approach. So, for practitioners, the textbooks gives a lot of other definitions. Practitioners, for practitioners, uh, think about, think about it as a process. Think about what an experiment as a process, process whose outcomes, whose outcomes are not known with certainty. So, uh, people talk about tossing the coin and all those kind of things, but let us talk about the uh, an experiment of making tea. Okay. So, we will boil water, add tea dust, add sugar, add milk, okay. then uh, boil uh, and stop, uh, pour and drink. So, when you do all these kind of things steps, then you finally get a tea. If you think about it, you get a cup. Uh, within which you have tea. Now, you are drinking tea, hot tea. Now, each time when you make the tea, you actually would get not the exact tea. You will get some different versions of the tea. So, what type of tea you are going to get, there is no guarantee of it. You will get tea, but some different uh, versions of tea. So, similarly, if you follow a process whose outcomes are not known with certainty, you know that you will get an outcome, but which outcome you are get, you are not going to uh, be sure about it. So, this the process process could be a decision making process, decision making process. For example, let us talk about reducing the price, reduce price of car. So, Tata Motors try to reduce the uh, price of the car. So, let us take um, for the time being, let us take uh, Maruti Suzuki uh, reduces price of Swift. Let us say they reduce the price of their Swift car model. Then what happens? How is it going to impact? Well, there is no guarantee that uh, you can have increased sales. Okay, you can have reduced sales, okay. then competition reducing the price, competition less price, okay, etcetera. There are quite a lot of options. We are not sure what is going to happen. You cannot say that this is going to happen 100 percent, this is wrong, cannot say that. So, something will happen with some probability. So, that kind of a situation where you are not sure about the outcome of the experiment or outcome which one will have occur with certainty that is called as a experiment. 
the next work concept we need to talk about is the sample space. So, in sample space when you enumerate when you enumerate all possible option all possible outcomes outcomes of an experiment experiment that collection that collection or in a way the mathematical phrase for is it or the set okay that collection or the set are called as as the sample points or sorry as is called as a sample space or not r it is is called as a sample space uh, let us clear this it is the collection the set e is called as the sample space. So, if you are let us think about a example of you know rolling a die rolling a fair die dies ok. So, a die has a face so die is like a cube you yes, all know about that ok it is like 1 2 3 like this dots if you are rolling this the outcomes you are going to get is you can get the face value 1 2 3 4 5 and 6. So, this collection of these outcomes this is what is called as a sample space this set is the sample space of rolling a fair die ok fine. Then there are many other ways we can think about doing this as well we will give take an example if if you roll two fair dice roll two fair dice then what it will be the sample space the sample space will be you can think about it this way the first die uh, will have a face of 1 second will also have a face of 1 then the first die can have a face of 1 second can have a face of 2 first die can have a face of 1 second die can have a face of 3 like this all the way to first die can have a face of 1 second die can have a face of 6. Similarly, the first die can have a face of 2 second die can have a face of 1 first die can have a face of 2 second can also have a face of 2 then 2 3 like this all the way to 2 6 ok. Similarly, the la you can think about last option will be the first die can have a face of 6 second die can have a face of 1 uh, first die can have a face of 6 second die can have a face of 2 first die can have a face of 6 second die can have a face of 3 all the way up to both dice giving 6 x ok. So, this collection ok. So, you know there are 6 options like here and there are 6 options this way. So, you have 36 different possible options ok. So, this sample space of rolling the 2 dice has 36 points ok. So, which brings the next concept sample points what are sample points the individual outcomes the individual outcomes outcomes in the collection or the set as we called or the set are called as the as the sample points. As an example in the rolling of the two fair dice the face of 4 and 3 this is a sample point sample point where dice die 1 has the face of 4 and die 2 has the face value of value of 3 ok. So, I hope you guys understand the basic concepts of the random variables. So, we are trying to get into the basics of random variables. So, these three concepts are important for us to get to the basics of random variables. Now, the next concept is now when we talk about uh, experiment sample points and everything then what are random variables actually how do we define a random variable ok. So, the first thing is there are many definitions many definitions ok uh, textbook etcetera. But since it is a practitioners course let us see what the practitioners think about it. 
for practitioners practitioners the following definition the following should work okay so this definition is more meant towards the practitioners it is a function or think about it as a rule think about it as a rule okay a rule of thumb or something like that a rule that assigns that assigns a real number that assigns a real number that is real number means any number between minus infinity and plus infinity so the entire scale okay any real number to each point in the sample space each point in the sample space okay so let's consider for example let's consider the consider the rolling of two dice we already mentioned this example if we are rolling the two dice then what are we going to say if x is a random variable x capital x is a random variable is a random variable or rule okay that corresponds that corresponds corresponds to the sum of two dice two dice or sum of face values of two dice if that is the case we are looking at dice then <coughs> x assigns the value 7 to the outcome 4 3 okay also 3 4 as well so that means if you roll a die and if the random variable is the rule that says the sum of the two dice the rule is sum of the face values of the two dice if that is the rule then if you roll two dice and you get the die one as face uh, value for 3 and die 2 as the face value sorry die 1 as the face value of 4 and die 2 as the face value 3 then this 7 is assigned to the face value of this similarly 3 and 4 also the dice will change but the same value gets assigned to it okay so always remember random variables random variables are denoted denoted by uh, uppercase letters okay so typically you use capital letters uppercase letters to denote the random variable okay the value of the random variable the value of the random variable is denoted by by lower case letters so mathematically if i say x equal to little x then this is the random variable and this is supposed to be its value or another way to think about it is if i say x equal to 7 and then x this capital letter denotes the rule sum of the face values and then 7 is that the sum of the face values coming to be 7 so this is the rule that assigns the real number to the uh, point in the sample space and the point in the sample space can be 4 3 or 3 4 okay there can be other points as well but for the time being as an example this is what we are going to deal with hope you guys understand this part of the concept so we will get into the next one then the random variables for us is typically divided into two okay uh, there are many ways people look into it and for so let's think about it as this way random variables 
as I said earlier, they are divided into two. So, the first one is what we call as discrete RV, RV is called random variables okay, and continuous RV random variable. So, we are going to talk about discrete random variables and continuous random variables. Okay. So, let us talk about the first one discrete. Okay. So, we are now talking about discrete. A random variable x, a random variable x is x uppercase x, x is said to be discrete, discrete if it can take an at most or take on at most a countable not a countable number of values values let us say x 1 x 2 etcetera lower case is used to denote the values. So, when you say countable this phrase countable what does it means countable implies implies that the set of possible values set of possible values values can be put in put in a one to one correspondence one to one correspondence okay please check my spellings because i'm not very good with this corresponding one to one correspondence with set of positive integers. Okay. This is what the discrete random variables is talk about. Okay. So, uh, if we can connect it, so if you think about the random variable x, so let us think about an example. We talk about the random variable x where x is the sum of the phase values, x sum of phase values of two dice if that is the case then the sample space of s is equal to 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and 12 uh, sorry this is a set when you say 2 this implies the face value of 1 and 1 and 12 the face value of 6 and 6 all other possibilities are mapped into different values in this okay so, if you have for to 3, it will be mapped to uh, 1 and 2 and 2 and 1. So, both will be mapped by this random variable 3. Okay. So, these two outcomes are mapped by 3 in this case. All right. So, if that is the case, then um, we talked about a countable set. What, uh, what is an example of a countable set or a count? Then what is an example of an uncountable set? So, example of uncountable okay, thing that you cannot count an uncountable set is all the real numbers all the real numbers between 0 and 1 0 and 1. So, here you can have values like 0 0.12379 then there is another value called 0 0.3468 like this. So, you can have infinitely large infinite numbers between just 0 and 1. Okay. So, if that is the case consider a random variable a random variable that can take that can take an uncountably uncountably infinite number of values number of different values okay uh, different values for example like all non-negative 
in real numbers. So, think about a random variable that can take uncountably infinite number of different values. Okay. So, for time being, um, let us consider it as consider it as a promising candidate, promising candidate for for continuous random variable. So, what we are doing here is that the, uh, the countably infinite number of different values, they are promising candidate for continuous random variables. We are not defined continuous random variable yet, but for the time being let us consider it that way. Okay. If that is the case, then let us look into uh, uh, the probability. Okay. Uh, so, it is easy to describe probability in terms of the discrete random variables and then we will move to the continuous random variables little later down the road. So, for that we need to look into the concept of event first. Okay. So, what is event? So, again, it is a practitioner's definition from practitioner viewpoint, practitioner or practitioner's view, what is it? It is defined, it is a set of, it is not defined, it is a set of set of outcomes, outcomes of an experiment. So, which means it is a subset of the sample space. Okay, so, subset of the sample space to which a probability assigned, to which a probability is assigned, is assigned. Okay. So, uh, what we are basically saying is that if you say if you are rolling a fair die, so if you say the experiment is rolling a die and then you get the sample space to be values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Okay. If I say that the random variable x is equal to 3, which means if x the random variable is getting a face value of 3, then the probability this event is rolling a die, the event is rolling a fair die and getting phase value of 3. Okay. The random variable is like the phase value. Okay. The event is getting the phase value equal to 3. If that is the case, then what is probability? Okay. Probability has many measures or many definitions and the typical textbook definition is, is the measure of likelihood, likelihood uh, that an event will occur. Okay. You are measuring the likelihood that an event will occur. This is what the book definition says. From our viewpoint, let's for the practitioner, what is it? It is a measure, it is a measure uh, of the extent extent to which an event is likely, an event is likely to occur, measured by the ratio of favorable cases to the number of possible cases. So, what we are saying here is that probability let us denote it as p is equal to the ratio. So, it is a fraction of the number of favorable cases. Okay. How many of these are the favorable cases for the thing that you are trying to measure for the favorable cases of the event. 
in consideration consideration if that is the case then to the total number of number of total possible events if this ratio if you calculate this ratio is what we call as the probability okay so if that is the case so let then let's see how to uh, do an example so i said earlier rolling two dice rolling two fair die dice and summing the face value summing the face value if that is the case the sample space we have denoted earlier as 1 1 1 2 etc all the way to 1 6 then 2 1 2 2 all the way up to 2 6 then similarly 6 1 6 2 all the way up to 6 6 ok and we said these are there are 36 of them them in total we also saw how to calculate the 36 this is the rolling of the fair die this is the outcomes of the experiment the experiment of rolling two fair dies okay the experiment is rolling two fair dies and the sum okay sample space of the sum uh, or sum of the faces can take the value of 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 that is what we said these are the face values it can take ok and we said this is a discrete random variable because this is countably finite ok countably uh, discrete ok this is a discrete random variable. So, if I say that uh, if the event is rolling two fair dice and getting the sum and getting the sum as 7 if that is the case then the random we seen already it is equal to x equal to 7 so in probability it will be probability it will be probability of x equal to 7 that means rolling two fair dice and getting the sum to be equal to 7 what would that be to calculate that this is number of times the sum of 7 this is your event ok event will occur by number of total occurrences this we have already seen it as 36 we see the 36 as the total occurrences so that will become its equal to 36 over something what are those over values so one way to get 7 will be in the first case if you have 1 and 6 it will be 7 second case it will be 2 and 5 that will also give you 7 then there will be 3 and 4 ok then there will be 4 and 3 which is the first die will give you 3 second die will be 4 this is 4 and 3 then the third one the, the other case will be 5 and 2 ok and the last case will be 6 and 1 ok if this is the case then you see this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 so there are 6 possible ways you can get 7 and there are 36 possible ways so your probability is 6 over 36 which is over 1 over 6 so this is how you call the probability calculate the probability of this particular event okay so this this is the probability that the discrete random variable discrete random variable x takes the value takes the value of 7 what does this x denote x is the rule and the rule is 
sum of phases. Okay. So, uh, this is called as a probability of the discrete random variable or discrete event. Okay. The event is that you are rolling a die and rolling two fair dice. Okay. Okay. So, then from here now we are going to move into the new concept called probability mass function. Okay. So, earlier as we said that uh, we said that probability probability that the discrete random variable discrete random variable probability that the discrete random variable x takes uh, on the value takes on the value little x okay, is given by is given by probability of x i which is equal to probability of x equal to x i okay, for i equal to 1, 2, 3 etcetera. So, this is the notational way of writing the probability that the random variable x takes the value x little x and for each individual case one i for 1, 2, 3, 4 i is an index uh, it will take different values. And uh, so summation of all i p of x i is equal to 1. That means, all these probabilities if you sum of them sum of all probabilities uh, is equal to 1 something like this. Okay. So, this means that this means that all probability statements probability statements about x x can be computed can be computed from p of x okay or at least in principle So, in principle you can calculate all probability statement x about x. So, this is called as the, the probability mass function of x. Mass function of x. Uh, so, if you have say that let us think about the example of rolling two fair dice then if we say probability of 2 which means probability of x equal to 2 when you are rolling 2 fair dice and looking at the sum of the values then this is equal to we are saying the only one way to get this is phase 1 and a 1 over the 36 of it which is 1 over 36 like this. So, if I say probability of 3 then we are talking about probability of x equal to 3 which means you roll 2 fair dice and get the values uh, 2 phase values and sum them and those values sum equal to 3 that is 1 2 and 2 1 over 36 which is 2 over 36 okay number of favorable to total number of outcomes so if that's the case hence we can write can write uh, little x the value of little x we can write kind of a table where it starts with 2 then let's say you have 3 4 5 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. These are the possible values and you have the p of x, the probability of x. So, this means probability that the x takes the value of 2, we already have calculated 1 over 36, 3 we have calculated 2 over 36, 4, 4 is equivalent to 1 and 3, 3, 1, 2, 2. So, that will be 3 over 36, 5 will be, what are the values of 5? It will be 1, 4, 2, 3, 3, 2 and 4, 1. So, these are the values of 5. So, that will be 4 over 36. 6 will be 1, 5, 2, 4, 3, 3, then 3, 3, either way it is the same, you cannot distinguish between each other 3, 3, 
then there is 4 and 2 and then 5 and 1. Okay. There is no 6 0. So, if you look at this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, it will be 5 over 36. 7 we already calculated the 6 over 36. Now, what will be the value of 8? How many ways you can make 8? So, you cannot make it with the 1. So, it will be 2 and 6. Okay. Then obviously, then with 3 you can make it as 5, then you have 4 and 4, okay. then you have 5 and 3 and 6 and 2. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, it will be 5 over 36. Similarly, 9 will be 4 over 36, this will be 3 over 36, 2 over 36 and 12 will be 1 over 36, 12 will be just the case of 6 and 6. So, this uh, thing that this is this table okay, or some people call it as the lookup table. Okay. This lookup table is the PMF probability mass function of x random variable x which is about rolling two fair dice and taking the face value. Okay. So, now with this it is time for us to come to the definition of continuous random variable. Okay. So, what is a continuous random variable? We have earlier mentioned that if a random variable can be given the uh, a, a countably infinite values between two limits a and b and the, all the real numbers countably infinite real number values between the random between the limits a and b then that is a possible candidate for a, a continuous random variable. So, now let us formally define because now we know what is a probability mass function and other things. So, using which we can now define a continuous random variable. So, what is a continuous random variable? A random variable, a random variable, this is again the practitioner's definition x is said to be continuous, to be continuous if there exists a non negative non negative function a non negative function f of x such that such that for any set of for any set of real numbers or real number any set of real number b okay probability of x element of b the random variable is an element of b is given by integral of b f of x dx okay so you if you integrate this function within that uh, particular b any real number set that will give you the probability and integral of minus infinity to plus infinity f of x dx is equal to 1. If you integrate it across the entire set of real numbers, this is equivalent equivalent to say all probabilities probabilities sum to 1. Okay. So, uh, this also implies this also implies that all probability statements all probability statements about x x can be okay or at least in principle principle x can be computed computed from f of x okay the f of x is the function that we talk about which is called or which is known called as the probability density function density function probability density function for the continuous random variable x continuous 
random variable x. Okay. So, in this particular case continuous random variable is not necessarily just uh, um, assigning of uh, real values. It is the assigning of real values in such a way that there exists a positive function okay, uh, or a non-negative function f of x that will define, it will allow you to find the probability of x for any given set b and if you integrate this function from minus infinity to plus infinity the value will be equal to 1. If that is the case then this is called as the probability density function p d f of x. Okay. So, p d f is typically used for continuous and for p m f is of used for discrete. Okay. All right. So, using this you can find the probabilities at any given point any any particular probability statement can be calculated. So, let us give an example, let us take an example okay, example to denote this. Right. Assume that assume that between two values, two values in R, R is a set of real numbers uh, A and B. Okay, these are the two values such that uh, a is less than b. Okay. So, the two values a and b and then such that a is less than b and a random variable random variable uh, can take can take any value any value between a and b. The random variable can take any value between a and b with equal probability probability any value can be taken with equal probability which implies or that is all values between a and B are equally likely, equally likely. If this is the random value variable, random variable that any value can be taken between A and B with the equal probability, all values are possible with the equal probability, then you can think about it this way. If you have a graph, you want to draw a graph, this is the numbers going in next, we have a set of real numbers and in which somewhere you have a and somewhere you have b where a is less than b if that is the case and if you think about this this has the f of x the probability of this. So, between this a and b all of these will have the same value. Okay. So, up to here it is 0 there is no probability at a it will have one probability and the same probability will remain until you reach b and after b there is no probability 0 probability. So, between A and B any random variable you take their probability is one and the same this denotes the equally likely aspect or same okay, with equal probability equally likely. Okay. All right. If that is the case then, then any value any value can be given by given by f of x equal to can write a function we say 1 minus 1 over b minus a. So, if you take this difference this is b minus a take the difference and find the ratio of this then this will give an equally likely probability for all values between a and b take any value between a and b this is the equally likely probability or 0 otherwise. Okay. Uh, so, for all other places this probability is not defined. So, if that is the case if you want to find so to find probability of x equal to little x that is the case then it amounts to amounts to integral minus infinity to x f of x dx 
which is equal to integral minus infinity to a f of x dx plus a to x f of x dx. This is integration by parts and we know that within these limits it is 0 because the function is not defined. So, this goes to 0 you only need to do is this integral which is equal to integral a to x 1 over b minus a that is your f of x dx which is equal to x within the x over b minus a which is equal to a and x. Okay. So, if you do this, this is x minus a by b minus a. So, this equation, this closed form equation that we write here, this tells you what is the probability of any value, any value of x between a and b. This can be called as the PDF, probability mass function is for discrete as the PDF of x. Okay. All right. So, with this we kind of look at the uh, our uh, discussion on probability, uh, cube discussion on probability for the practitioners have come to an end and I know there is so much more associated with this about hypothesis and all those kind of things which we will discuss in the later classes to go. But uh, the most important part of this is everybody should realize that the concept of probability can be uh, addressed in this particular fashion and th these are the basic building blocks of the probability and from here we can actually build the uh, larger theorems. And these probabilities are important especially when you are doing analytics because when you are having a hypothesis and when you are trying to do hypothesis testing, you will be dealing with different probability distributions and other aspects as such. So, thank you for your patient hearing and we will see you in the next class. Thank you.